Welcome back, everybody. Just going through some business. Sports update here, too, coming up. Can you put up the comment? Uh, if you guys can find it from Brian in uh, Vancouver from the BC Lions Den podcast. And it, it kind of goes along with us. John Schmeiser's watching Kansas City this morning. He says, does the media affect the team's performance? A pro athlete needs to rise above that and should adopt Brian Sutter's approach. That's just noise. You're right. And here's Brian. Breaking. Canucks social media getting roasted by fans and media for pulling up old tweets, ripping them for the JT Miller trade. Just another day in the snowflake capital of Canada. Keep on keeping on at Vancouver Canucks. Uh, If that's what the Canucks are doing, I absolutely love that. And I remember being on Vancouver radio in the studio with Andrew Walker probably about three years ago, two, three years ago when the Riders were out there. And I said, you guys... To the listeners, you got to stick with Travis Green. Clearly, he knows what he's doing. Had great success in Portland. Jim Benning, like, stop ripping these guys. It's a Vancouver thing. Yeah. You know, and for the Canucks to pull those up, I say good on them. But this social media thing, oh, man. It's a delicious topic for me because I was talking about the Vegas Golden Knights the other day. I said it to you guys. After the Knights beat Colorado to claim first overall, in the, in the round-robin qualifying session, the Golden Knights put Colorado Avalanche in all lowercase. They tweeted it, and then capital L's. Loss. L. And they were getting ripped by their own fans, saying, have some class, win with class. I didn't know where I stood on that. I got a pretty good idea how Kelly McCrimmon would feel about it. And I don't know Peter DeBurr, but any head coach would not really like you trolling a team after you just beat him. But is that just fun? Is that just marketing? Is that just schutzpah and you just keep it over here and you just worry about hockey? I don't know. Hockey people need to worry about hockey. Yeah. Let the marketing people and the branding people worry about that and making it fun for the fans. I'm not saying it was a problem within the Golden Knights. I'm saying it could have been a problem within oh, yeah. the Golden Knights or any team like that. They don't want the, the hockey people don't want the distraction. No. They don't want to do any of the poking and prodding. They don't want the bulletin board material for the opposition that's what it is they, they don't but the, at the other on the other hand those social media guys carolina's doing a great job vegas are two of the best they're creating buzz for their markets but i see this you know the fans versus the hockey people and i'm going to go back to nashville because i'm seeing the fans on social media mad max is one of them right you know arizona got lucky darcy kemper you know he's the, a predators fan it, it was a yeah it was a fluke right Now you get the general manager of Nashville saying, we have to make changes. There are players who won't be back because we weren't good enough. The hockey people get it. You lost because you weren't good enough. But the fans, you know, want to, you know, jump on and say it was fluky or Well, maybe the Predators owners should call Mad Max or Summer Student and realize they just lost because of bad luck. He'd give them lots. But if it's bad luck, (laughs) then don't change anything, right? If the Leafs got beat just by a good goaltender, then don't make any changes. Nelson Hakowicz writes in and says, the Riders tried it with New Gainer. And their social team got the old slap on the wrist. I don't. I fail to see the connection, Nelson. You'll have to tell me this tonight when you come in to run Thursday Night Football Sim. Riders tried to freshen up the look of their game of the Gopher, which frankly don't have the biggest problem with that. But the fact that they made him look like a meth zombie tweaker <laughs> probably went a little too far. Right, I had far less of a problem with them slimlining and updating the Gainer outfit as I do them taking away the Ticats doll that he's been <laughs> ripping apart and grabbing by the crotch for 30 years. That I had a problem with because some snowflake complained on social media about it. Like there was one time that this football club stood up and knew the difference between right, and right or wrong, and I don't believe, I think those days are gone But as far as the idea of updating the outfit, at some point you had to. What? I'm I'm just, I can't. I can't stop thinking about Ed Helm at the piano. And if he's been murdered by crystal meth tweakers. (laughs) The hangover. (laughs) The hangover. Yeah. Too funny. Anyways. Getting way off topic here. Yeah, we're, Mike we're, Phoenix in Toronto, if we didn't have social media, we wouldn't have as many snowflakes or keyboard warriors. Actually, you're back to a, to a really good point there. And whether it's regarding sports or how you run your corporation, 
if you know what you're doing and you have confidence in yourself, and I would extend it to say if you have integrity, that it doesn't matter what anybody else says about social media. If you stand by your people and you know what their intentions are, you shouldn't have to fire somebody because some, and I won't even necessarily say snowflake, but some dissenter, some complainer on Twitter calls the boss to get you in trouble. If you believe in your people, if you believe in what you're doing. But there's not enough people with integrity anymore in these positions at the top that don't even know about themselves, let alone what's going on below them. So they fire somebody because somebody was mad on Twitter. Fair? Fair. Social media is not the problem. People are. People are the problem. Social media is not the problem. And social media hasn't created this. You got to understand, we're doing the same things we've always done. It just looks different. The editorial letter to the editor in the newspaper was social media before there was social media. Anonymous right. letters sent into the newspaper complaining about a columnist or complaining about this or that. Call in shows on old school radio stations. The same thing. That was social media before social media. We're all behaving the same way. It's just a matter of it's more readily accessible and there's just more of it now. Mm -hmm. You know, social media is not really the Well, and, and that's the problem that I have with people complaining about what the writers are saying about the Leafs and the bloggers and the pundits. Who cares? Who cares? If Brendan Shanahan believes in Kyle Dubas and Sheldon Keefe, then it doesn't matter what it's on front cover of the paper the next day. None of that matters. So to go back to the media influences wins or losses, give me a break. Come on. It's just an excuse. I got one the other day. I heard that uh, some in the CFL are blaming the media for leaks with regards to the return to play. There's leaks in the, leaks in the media. It's causing a problem for us. Media is not leaking anything. It's your people that are leaking it. I know. That's why. Stop blaming others and look in the damn mirror for once and in the league's existence and have a little patience i just it makes me think of a guy in an airplane you've been sitting on the runway and there's a delay and you've been sitting there for 45 minutes You're like this is just insane i gotta get off the plane and you, and you decide to leave or you get an extra flight you take a different flight or you decide to drive because your flight's delayed and if you just sit on that runway for the hour that you're going to be delayed, you're still going to get to your destination so much faster. Like patience, right? It doesn't happen in one, you know, it doesn't happen right away. Things take time. Oh, see, I, I, we got to bring in the Army guy, Rylan Betker, who said he was having his coffee and joined the show. He says social media is the spotlight that has shone light on the multiple insecurities that we typically didn't see before. I appreciate you saying that. Because as much as I do think Donald Trump's an idiot, and if I knew him, I'd, I'd hate him. I mean... It's been proven he's not a good person. If you think this hate and anger was brought forth because he's the president, you don't think it was bubbling there for the last 300 years in America? Right? This has all come to the surface during his time. He hasn't created the hate and anger. He has exposed it. Right? Yes. That's my take on that. Completely. Um, Perry Mobile text line. Connor Anderson writes in and says, "From uh, Connor from Yorkton here, I wish I could watch the full show, but I'm stuck helping out with the garage sale. Currently raining, though. And he does an unhappy emoji. <laughs> Connor, let me give you a little advice here. As an old fart, enjoy that garage sale and enjoy the people that you're helping out with that garage sale. And good for you for doing it, by the way. Because on Sunday was the 32nd anniversary of the Wayne Gretzky trade out of Edmonton, and I remember where I was on August 9th, 1988. I was helping my mom get ready for the school year, carrying textbooks out of the storage room at the Milestone High School, helping her because she was the school administrative assistant. I'll never forget I was with my mom that day when I was your age in 1988. Cherish these moments. Don't complain about them. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's Rod's rant. That's fatherly advice right there. For Bronco Plumbing and Heating, mention Rod sent you, and they'll give you 10% off. You got plumbing and heating issues? They're the ones to call. Um, Jim Wagner writes in, Prairie Mobile Text Line. He says, good morning, RP team. Another great show as usual. Go Flyers. Hey, dupes, any new double XL bunny hugs coming in soon? Over to me. Yeah. I don't have a date for you, but we've been talking to our suppliers. So we should have an order coming in uh, hopefully very soon. But if you, yeah, 
We'll leave it there. If you what? No, leave it there. Send me a, send me a DM. I'll see what I can do for you. Jim Wagner, send him a direct message. Uh, Brady writes in, Bull Bichette became the first player in the modern era to reach base safely six times, hit a home run, and steal two bases in a single game. He also set a franchise record, becoming the youngest player to have a five-hit game. Oh, I know. Bull Bichette's from the future. These are exciting times for the Toronto Blue Jays, and they are exciting to watch every night. Although, I do get the concept of not wanting to line up against the Stanley Cup playoffs. If you missed the rollout earlier, I said, hey, the Blue Jays were doing their thing in a wild game. I saw on Twitter what was going on in Buffalo. But I didn't want to switch the channel from the Philly Canadiens game. Right. And the Raptors were doing their thing, and they were having a wild comeback. So it's an interesting time right now in sports. Were you channel surfing last night? A little bit. But I, I, I was so locked into the two hockey games that I didn't want to change a channel. I didn't want to change. I was locked into the Habs and Flyers and then right into the Canucks and Blues. So I didn't do a lot of channel surfing. I watched SportsCenter later. <laughs> can, we put, can you put up the comment from when, uh, Jason Wall? He's in Winnipeg. I see people want to weigh in on this topic. He says, social media is like when you land in an airplane and the seatbelt sign goes off. Half the people stand up, grab their bag from the overhead compartment, and then wait, wait, wait for the door to open and then file out row by row. Why are people at the back of the plane standing and waiting? LOL. That's a good point. Probably because they're tired of sitting down. Who knows? It's a free country, I thought. I thought. I think our... uh, What's going on is borderline unconstitutional right now, but I'm not going to quite go down on that rant today. But you have a point? Well, it's kind of like the inside people on the, on the aisles. They go up and they grab their bags and then they stand in the aisle. But then the people complain because the people in the window seats didn't get a chance to get up and get their bags. Now you've got to wait for them to get up, get their bag out of the overhead yeah. compartment, right? Instead of getting their bag and sitting down. I don't, I don't mind uh, not traveling. I was, I've said to my wife mul- multiple times, I miss going places, but I don't miss traveling. You know, and it reminds me of just before the pandemic, I was coming home from Vegas, and I remember telling you guys the story. There was like a fight on the plane. America. Although the flight was going to Vancouver, so it might have been Canadians. I'm not sure. But I had my brother right beside me. We were in the exit row because of our long legs. And all of a sudden, like, I'm talking, guys were like this, fighting over baggage space. Think about that for a second. This is what life has come to. They're going to throw down over who had enough baggage space and who was... So anyways, and then my brother stood up and got in between him. He's like, guys, sit down! And if you knew him, you'd get down the second that he said that. I immediately went into, um, um. Like, that's... I immediately went into that. Close my eyes. And like, I did. And then the stewardess, flight attendant, sorry, like five minutes later comes down the aisle and she kicks me. She's like, excuse me, sir, are you okay? And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm fine. Oh, wait, my brother's the one that you want to talk to. He's the guy that got into it. He's like, I'm great. (laughs) So I said to him, what if you had said you weren't great? What would they have done? And he goes, kick those guys off. Yeah. Right? Really? Another time, folks, back when we used to fly in groups Remember on those an days? aircraft. <laughs> Mind-blowing. Too funny. <laughs> I know. Too funny. Are you oh, going to cut what? what? I got, got one more point because I'm going to leave here when those guys come in. Yeah. Um, I did the quick math on the Rod Brindamore fine. Just for people to be like, 25 grand, because you always hear this, 25 grand, it's a drop in the bucket, right? It's nothing to these millionaires. I think Rod's making somewhere around $2 million a year really? as the coach. Okay, He's making two grand or $2 million. It's a $25,000 fine. That's the same as if you're making $50,000 a year, getting fined $625. Bucks. It's a big fine. That's a big <laughs> fine. Yeah. It hits the pocketbook the same way. Rod Brindamore doesn't just have $25,000 falling out of his jeans. Laying around. No. No. Uh, we are going to talk Pence, Craft, Hockeyville next, and then Dupes is going to come back for overtime. You're not going to want to miss that. It's the RP Show, episode number 296 of Canada's Daytime Sports Talk Show. Continues after this break. You're watching on Game Plus Network, Facebook Live, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 